open your Bible, if you will, to the book of Revelation and the 12th chapter. We've been going through this book. I can't say we're doing every verse, but we're trying to cover it as much as we can to let you and me know what we have in the Lord uh, and what's going on. Uh, what we're talking about since the fourth chapter is uh, you and I, all Christians, will be with the Lord in heaven when all this is going on. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, he's in heaven now. He used to try to convince me that we were going through the tribulation. And uh, I said, well, i tell you what, I just don't believe any of it, but i tell you what I'll do because I really like you so much. Whenever the Lord calls me to go home with him, I'm going to leave you all my books. <laughs> you know, he said, you're just being facetious. I said, well, I, I just don't believe in, I, I believe in pre-trib, and I'm going to be with the Lord. I don't believe I'm going to go through any of the things that we've been talking about the last several weeks. I, it's, it's God's uh, judgment against Israel. Primarily, it's called Jacob's Troubles. And it's the hour that's to come upon them. And even though uh, it's for them, everyone that rejects Jesus Christ and lives on this planet Earth during that time, they're going to suffer an awful lot. In fact, we pointed out last week, one-third of the population of this Earth will, be, uh, will die one way or another. And that's an awful lot of people, isn't it? I guess if, if, if I was uh, lost, I'd be thinking, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I hope if there's anyone in this congregation that's not saved, that you'll understand you do not have to be here. You can accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you can go to be with him. And then hopefully if you did accept him, you would really get busy and tell all your friends about him. So they might have that same privilege to be with you in heaven with him. Uh, we're going to talk about the war that was in heaven. Uh, I believe it's yet future, uh, but the way, the way it reads here, it's like it's already taken place. But this has to do with a period of time that deals with, uh, from the 4th chapter to the 19th chapter of Revelation, dealing with a short seven-year period. And so this is talking as we would go from the 4th chapter, what took place, the 5th chapter, on through there. And some of it's kind of intermingled back and forth, but this, this will take place uh, during the tribulation period. Uh, and, and maybe, I do not know... Personally, if it's right up at the very beginning, I do know that there's, as I read the scripture, that I know it's somewhere in the first three and a half years because it talks about, as you'll see later uh, here, Satan being uh, here on this earth doing everything he can in the last half, or I'll just put it this way, in three and a half years. And I think that's probably dealing with the last half. And probably why some believe in pre, uh, mid, the mid-rapture. You know, they, they see that Satan's here on earth during that time. Well, he's, he's alive and well today. A lot of things I don't understand, but I just believe. Just uh, because God said it, uh, I just believe it. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm just, I, don't, I think he cannot lie. Well, he's going to do whatever he says. I believe Romans 8, 28. It says that all things work together for good to them that love God. And there's a key right there, that love God, that are called according to his purpose. I don't understand all the all things, but I know God's working all the all things out. The all things aren't, uh, all the things that's working together aren't good. We already pointed that out in our message of few lessons back, but they are working together for good to them that love God that are called according to his purpose. So we know that's true. Uh, the things that's going on around our life today has, a, has a, an end result of working together for good for us because we're children of God. I don't like 
the way things are going on in our country and our, uh, you know, I like good Christian leadership anywhere. Uh, I don't like the, some of the leaders in our country the way they lead. I pray for them as this church does all the time. But God somehow is using them to bring about a purpose, to fulfill a, one, a purpose for himself. So it's going to work out good. Uh, we're not losers. We're winners. We can look at this revelation, and we know we're victorious. Uh, we've been victorious ever since we accepted Christ, but with all the circumstances that's going on, things are bad, folks, but they're not nearly as bad as they're going to get. All over the world, Christians are being persecuted. It's just going to be that way because Satan is angry and he's going to do everything he can to stop the name of Jesus. He's, as we pointed out in less than a couple of weeks back, uh, ever since the very first day, if you remember, he, he, he caused uh, Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil and then Adam did the same things in sin and that's the beginning of Satan's work in trying to stop the birth of the, of the Son of God, to stop the, the, him from coming. And then, as we pointed out many different times, he worked hard to stop, to break down the, even the lineage that he would come to. He tried to, to get David killed by Saul. You just look at it and you can see Satan knows a lot. He's, he's not ignorant. He knows a lot, and he tried from the very beginning of mankind all the way through to the very birth of Christ. He even tried to stop the birth of Christ. Uh, even after the birth of Christ, he tried to have him killed by having all the male babies killed up to a two-year-old, uh, 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 at ages of two-year-old. He tried to stop that. He's tried to stop the, the birth. He tried to stop the, uh, the raising of Jesus for the purpose of dying on the cross. Uh, he tried to keep him in the grave. He had he had the guards there. Uh, you know, he was he's done everything he can to stop the crucifixion of Christ, because Christ would be saving your soul. But even after that, as we read last week, he's been persecuting the woman that brought forth uh, the birth of that child. And that woman, as we pointed out, is the nation of Israel. She, uh, and that baby that was born surely did come from the Virgin Mary, but he's tried every way to stop that uh, uh, birth. He ought, now he's angry. He's doing everything to try to destroy the whole nation. He hates that woman. You wonder, you know, look what's going on all around. I mean, it's one of the smallest nations on the earth, and yet, uh, you know, I don't know what they're doing except I can say this. The devil's working hard to destroy them. But I got news for the world. Nobody's going to destroy God's people. Yeah. No one. That's why you and I stand in security. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, then you're secure. No matter what's happened, no matter what uh, goes on uh, in government or whatever to keep us from worshiping, they cannot stop us because we're God's children. We're his children by birth. We've been born into his uh, family. So uh, there's a battle. Uh, looking at verse 7 in Revelation, it's the beginning of this, uh, and it reads as though the battle is past. It says, and there was war in heaven. There was war in heaven, it says. And as I pointed out, what point in time this takes place during this period I do not know but I know by the time it's written down here John writes as though it's already taken place it says Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels so, so the battle so what was the battle over it all starts it's all over sin God told Adam the day that you eat thereof thou shalt surely die sin did not begin just at the garden of Eden Sin began in heaven. And if you want to see that, look back to the book of Isaiah. Uh, give you an, uh, a reading from the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And you'll see that sin actually started with Satan in heaven. Uh, where, uh, well, to begin with, 
the one we call Satan, the devil, the dragon, all the different names that he's referred uh, to, he was one of the, probably the most beautiful creature ever created. He was probably the most beautiful being there was. But, as I've told, uh, told a young lady the other day, you're very beautiful, but be sure you stay with God because your beauty can overthrow you. And you, because you know that you're pretty, I say that to any, any girl in here today or any boy that thinks he's really handsome, you have to watch those things because they will cause you to fall. You better keep your eye on the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in uh, Isaiah 14, in verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Now I want all of you young people to listen carefully because we're always talking about pride goeth before a, a fall or destruction. I want you to listen to it. It started in heaven. Pride is a, a destroying thing and, and destructive in your own life. It says, for thou hast said in thine heart, and he says it five times he uses the word I. He's got an I problem. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the, of the congregation uh, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will uh, be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the of pit. You know, there's people today that, that teaches falsely that we're going to be gods when we get to heaven. You're just going to gradually ascend up to a level where you're a god. Nobody's going to be a god, my dear friend. There's only one God in heaven, and he's known in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you're not going to be a God. You're going to be a, a creature that's been saved by grace of God that will have a transformed body. You're going to have a body as, as the Son of God had. But this Satan said, I will do this, and I will do that. I'm going to be up above the stars of God. I'm going to ascend uh, in the high, uh, to the throne of, of, of God himself. Eye problem. Sin is a, has been introduced right here in, in heaven, and it all starts in the heart. Did you notice verse 13? He said, For thou hast said in thine heart. It's always in the heart. It's, it's with the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. I was talking to someone the other day. This, oh, you know, people, folks, listen, I don't, I don't believe in get, people should go out and drink and get drunk, and, and I don't believe people are smoke cigarettes. You don't get down to it. But I want to tell you, the Bible it says very plainly, it's not what you put in your mouth that can defiles you. It's what comes out of your heart. It's already in the heart. And we need to learn that the heart is desperately wicked, and no one knows it but God. And so the sin all started in his heart. He said, Thou hast said in thine heart, I'm going to do this or that. So sin's introduced in, in uh, heaven. And then it's brought down to earth when the serpent... Uh, deceived uh, Eve, and then Eve, uh, Adam, to really the reason for the sin that we have. And it's passed on to you. And because we're sons of Adam, we, we have the problem of sin. And sin is, is truly an I thing. It's what I do. You can't blame your mom, your dad, your grandparents, or where, how you're raised, or how, uh, you know, if you're raised in a Christian home. I know kids that are raised in Christian homes that has no reason to be away from God, but they are. But I also know people, kids that are raised in homes that just about as cruel as they can be, and they and they doing what their parents did. God does not hold your parents uh, accountable for your being lost. He holds you accountable for not believing in Jesus Christ. Salvation is personal. It's between you and Almighty God in heaven. And and you can blame your parents for the way they raised you or how they didn't raise you in church or whatever, but I'm telling you, God makes it a very personal thing. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone missed the mark of perfection. And so you don't blame someone else. You look, at, look in here at number one, and you'll realize you're the one 
it's lost. And the reason you're lost is your sin that you have committed against God. Sin is, uh, is always a, I will do this, and I will do that, and I don't have to have God, and so forth. Sin has a, a, a real promise penalty. Uh, he said uh, there's no uh, revelation that uh, when this event takes place, but he said, I will do it. And Satan then is promised uh, that I'm, you're going to be cast down to the sides of the pit. Did you know that if you go to hell, you are really an intruder? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible is very plain that, that the hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. And if you go there, it's simply because you rejected the only begotten Son of God. It's not, it's not God's fault, and you're not going to be able to stand before him and say, but God. No, God's going to say, but you. You heard the gospel. It's been preached around the world. It's been preached all over the radio and television in every church and across the nation, door to door, and you rejected my only begotten son. And you stand, even if you uh, like the group there in Matthew that will stand before God and say, but we cast out devils in thy name. We did many mighty works in thy name. We did this and that in thy name. And we led the singing and we did the preaching and we played the piano and the organ and we did this. And God said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. A God who cannot lie cannot say I never knew you if he ever knew you. And he cannot know you as his son until you believe in him as, your, as his child, until you believe in him as your own personal savior. But once he knows you, he can never say, I never knew you. And therefore, he's never going to condemn you. Sin has a, a promise penalty for Satan and for us, those that reject Jesus Christ. But it's a, it's a shameful product, too. And uh, Isaiah and talks about the, the Christ, I mean, uh, the devil being the most beautiful, but he becomes uh, hideous. In verse uh, 16 of that chapter, he's the, the most feared becomes the most impotent. They'll be saying, look at him. People walk by and say, hey, this is the one that deceived all the world. Now look at him. He's not going to be so powerful anymore. He, 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 he's living on borrowed time, and he knows it. <clears throat> but the war goes on. The most destructive is dis himself destroyed, verse 17 says. You know, I saw, uh, I used to watch boxing a lot. I never have like a bragger, but, uh, you know, a hero bragging about what I can do. And I, in due time, somebody can knock your block off. And I hear this sometimes in my grandkids with their they're trying to become a man. They're still a boy in a lot of cases, and it, I can do Nobody can do it. I can hit, and I can hit harder. Yeah, all right, somebody else can hit harder than you too. I guarantee you, you, you'll find out that you're not so big as you think you are. So I tell my guys that the best thing to do, and my grandson, the best thing you can do is walk away from a fight. You don't have to fight. Just walk away from it and say, God loves you, I'm going. I'm not sticking around here to be hit or hit on. I always figured I'd be the one hit, so I just went on and went away. Sin won't be tolerated by God, so the battle was raged, raged in chapter 12, verse 7. What the result of the war is very clear. In verse 8, in the first part it said, in Revelation 12 it said, and prevail not. The battle between Michael and his angels and the dragon and his angels and the dragon and his angels prevail not. It tells you very clearly what, what happened to him. Verse 8 and 9, and, and neither was their place found any more in heaven. Remember last week we was talking about a, uh, there's a place that's prepared for the woman, uh, I mean for the remnant, 
uh, in, uh, during the tribulation, there's a place somewhere that God prepared, there's a prepared uh, transportation for them to get to the place that God has prepared, and there's a table prepared. They're not going to have to concern themselves about eating. God's going to take care of their food. The protection is prepared for them. God's all going to take care of them. It's all here in the 12th chapter 2, first part. But this place uh, that, that where Satan had in heaven, he has no more. But he does have a prepared place. And that's the, the pit, sides of the, of the pit that he'll be cast into for a thousand years. In verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out. He's been able to stand there and bring accusations against you and me. Uh, all these years, uh, thousands of years, he's been there making accusations against God's people. But he'll be known and cast down and looked at as a different creature then. His, uh, his place, his verse 9, last part, says it's on the earth. That's where he, he will be cast to. And he knows he doesn't have much time left then. Uh, I'm going to verse 10. After this casting out, listen to verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. There was a, the, a reason this war is yet to come. But there was a war that went on that God took care of the battle for year so. Satan is trying hard to win your soul. He, he doesn't want you saved. But God wants you saved. And God proved that beyond a shadow of a doubt when he sent his only begotten son into this world. When we have the Christmas season and the big, all the stuff that goes on it's for commercialism more than anything, Truly, there was a Son of God born, according to Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 11, that's called the Savior of the world. And that Savior was born to die for your sins. It was uh, his purpose of his birth was consummated at Calvary. He, he came into this world specifically to die to bring salvation to your soul, to give you the privilege of being saved. He, he's, he wants you to be saved. And the strength is seen because he, as he went through all of this and he wrote, uttered three little words on Calvary. It is finished. Three little Greek words that means, in your or my language, paid in full. The debt that we owe, God's son paid it all at Calvary. He went from there to the grave and up, and 40 days later, he went to the Mount of Olives, and this shows his strength. And he stood there, suddenly he just ascended up into the, uh, to the heavens, into the clouds and that received him out of the sight of these uh, men. According to Acts chapter one, verse eight, He's taken up. But before he went up, the, the night before he was crucified, he had those men in the upper room. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He, he was going to die the next day. And they wouldn't understand all of this going on around them. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and here's his words. If I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Those are words that he made promise that he would come back. And because that he was brought into the world the way he was, 
went through everything that he did, was raised up, and they tried to kill him before he went to the cross. He died on that old rugged cross, paid your hell for you, was buried and rose again to prove that he was truly indeed the only begotten Son of God. And then he went back into heaven, and all the accusations that can be made against you, he's our advocate there. He's our intercessor. He's always there. Satan's there to try to, to, to stop him and stop us from going forward, making every kind of, look at him, look at her, look at what they're doing, look at this. All the things going on, my friend. And God says, what are you talking about? Huh? What are you talking about? What, are you, what sins are you talking about? I don't know. They don't have any sins. What sins are you trying to accuse them of? My son paid for those sins. He has no real accusation. He's telling the truth. We are sinners. But he can't make any accusation because we've been bought, bought with the precious blood of the Lamb of of God. But also 1 Thessalonians 4 16 says, For the Lord himself shall be the one that descends from heaven with a shout. I can just hear him. <laughs> but the war goes on, but the victory's won. I've said this a, a hundred times over, probably. I don't know, because I'm trying not to care whether I've said it before, because I'm today's the only day I know I'm living and I'm saying something. My brothers, I never feared anybody. I knew I, I, knew I was going to win. Anybody said fool with me. I had five brothers that they had to deal with. That I knew was going to be very difficult. And one sister. They wasn't going to get to me unless they could knock all six of them off first. And I'm back here just liking it. Hey, I got it better today than then. I'm standing behind the Lamb of God. And now all the accusations and gossip and everything that can be thrown. And God says, what are you talking about? And I'm standing back here saying, what are you talking about? I'm a child of God. I belong to him, body, soul, and spirit. And that's really good. Someone asked me the other day, are you, don't you get mad about that? I said, I don't have time to get mad. I'm right at the end of the tunnel. I'm ready to go out and go into heaven. I got to be happy. I got to help people. I've got to just overlook the garbage of the world around my life and enjoy the Lord. And that's what I'm going to do. And I hope that's what you will do. And don't let people sidetrack you because they'll try every way. Satan does not like you. He hates you. And he wants to stop you from being actively involved in the Lord's work. I remember when my dad, who was always working all of his life, finally one day retired and sat down in a rocking chair. Totally useless in no time because he wasn't doing anything. I'm not planning to be a quitter, and I'm not planning to sit down and rock. And I don't plan on, I hope I'm still doing this, and I, I don't care if I'm just standing here and just mentioning the blood of Christ for all over dead. I don't care where I'm at as long as I'm honoring the Lord in my life. That's all you need to do, folks, is honor the Lord. The war goes on, but we're victorious in Christ Jesus the Lord. And the accuser of our brethren cast down, verse 10 said. But how are we the overcomers? The verse 11 says, And they overcame him by blood of the Lamb. It's by the precious blood of Christ. The gospel believed. And then it goes on, says, and by the word of their testimony. Just what I just said. I gave you a word of testimony by the fact that my testimony is not in how I preach or how good I am. It's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's in a person. That's the word of the testimony he's talking about. And then it says, they love not their lives unto death. That's the love for the gospel of Jesus Christ, that regardless of what the cost is, they just went on. And that's what he said. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and, the, and they love not their own lives. It's not their life that counts, it's his. 
it counts. Uh, verse 12, first part says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You think it's bad now? Hey, when he gets cast out of heaven, it's going to be worse than it ever has been or shall ever be after this. He said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Are you going to be here? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about you and me. In 1944, on this day, on this very day, they landed on Normandy. The war was totally changed right there. It was over, really. Hitler was defeated when they went across that English Channel on June 6th and landed in Normandy. But you know what? It didn't end for 11 more months and two days. Even though he was defeated, he wouldn't quit fighting. We know Satan's defeated. He's not going to quit fighting yet. It's not over yet. There's still a lot of things that to, for the world to face because he didn't give up. Hitler didn't give up. 11 months of death, pain, suffering, and setbacks. 11 more months of, of families uh, just uh, hurting wanting to see their sons and their daughters back. But on uh, May 8th, 1945, the war was over. No more fighting. The battle's coming to an end. Satan's been cast out of heaven at this point, but he hadn't given up. And he's going to fight, the Bible says, 42 months. That's three and a half years, and it isn't going to be pretty. It's not going to be nice. I hope you're not here to see any of it. I'm telling you again that God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You should change your mind right now and believe in Jesus Christ, the personal Savior. If you believe in any kind of church, baptism, praying through, or any kind of uh, something you had to do, you need to change your mind because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You better change your mind and believe in him as your personal Savior. So what am I believing? You believe that he died on that old rugged cross for your sins. He paid your hell for you there. And that when he was buried, he stayed in that grave three days and three nights. And he came out, he came out victorious over sin and the grave and hell. Just for you, you must believe in him. As we stand, as our song leader, instrumentalist, Tom, we invite you to come. Trusting in Christ as your own personal Savior. Don't wait. You know, it's so easy to say, well, I'll take care of this this afternoon or next Sunday or whatever. The longer, the more you put it off, the harder your heart will get and the easier it will be for you to not change your mind and believe in Jesus Christ. What page? 247. The very first verse is your invitation to right where you are. I don't believe coming down here saves you at all. I believe right where you stand and you believe from your heart. It says from the heart man believes unto righteousness. Not from the heart and running down in front of the church. It's from the heart man believes unto righteousness. And right where you are, you believe in Christ as your Savior. But I, I do believe that when you trust him, you shouldn't be ashamed of him. And let us know, publicly professing, I've accepted Christ as my Savior. As we sing the first verse, you come. Mm -hmm.